Did you miss this in Captain Marvel? When Monica is changing the color of Carol's suit, she goes through a number of color combinations, including green and white as well as red and gold. Green and white were the original colors of Captain Marvel's suit in the comics, while red and gold were the same colors of DC superhero Shazam's suit. Guess what Shazam's original name was? That's right, Captain Marvel. Blink and you'll miss this in Toy Story 4. It's hard to spot, but look at this design on a plate in the antique store. Recognize it? It's actually from another Disney Pixar film. This is the same emblem used by Merida's clan in Brave. Did you miss this in Spider-Man Far From Home? During the end credits, look closely and you'll discover something special about Mysterio. You'll probably need to pause the screen for this one, but if you do, you can see where he got the inspiration for his suit by modeling it after the others, specifically Thor, Black Panther, and Doctor Strange. Did you miss this in Zootopia? There was a clue about future Disney movies that was hiding in plain sight. When Officer Hops and Nick spot Duke Weaselton selling bootleg movies, there's copies of movies he claims aren't even out yet, including parodies of Moana, which come out later the same year as Zootopia was released, as well as Frozen 2, which wouldn't come out for another three whole years. The other, Giraffic, was a pun on Gigantic, a Disney film which would later be canceled before being completed. Did you know this about Aladdin? Fans have long suspected the peddler in the beginning of the film is actually the genie in disguise, especially since they're both voiced by Robin Williams. The film's director actually confirmed that they're the same character, and there was supposed to be a big reveal at the end confirming this, but it ended up getting cut in the final film. Did you miss this in Avengers Endgame? When Thor gains weight, he's always showing to be wearing one particular item. Did you spot what it is? He's always wearing gloves, but not for an in-universe reason. They're used to cover up where the fat suit ends. Did you miss this in Frozen 2? At the beginning of the movie, when a young Anna and Elsa are playing together, look closely at the toys they've created out of snow and you'll find some very familiar faces. There's Dumbo the Elephant, Baymax from Big Hero 6, a dog that looks a lot like Bolt, as well as a pig and a dinosaur who might just be Rex and Ham from Toy Story. Did you know that in Lord of the Rings The Fellowship of the Ring, a very special prop was used for close-ups of the One Ring, like this one of the One Ring sitting in the snow? The prop ring was actually a gigantic one which was easier to film. You missed this in Forrest Gump. When Forrest is jogging across America, he has a very special stand-in. The film used Tom Hanks' brother Jim Hanks for these scenes, since only Jim could truly imitate Forrest's strange, stiff style of running. Home Alone has a detail you've definitely missed. In the famous scene where Marv sticks his head through the doggy door and gets shot by a BB gun, you may have asked yourself, why is there a doggy door even when we never see a dog? This is explained by a line much earlier in the film that feels like a throwaway bit of information when it's mentioned that the family dog has been placed in a kennel for the trip. You missed this in Star Wars The Force Awakens. When Han Solo and Chewbacca first arrive at the Starkiller base, Han drops his coat on the floor. Later on, when they're leaving the base, Chewbacca hands the same coat back to Han, which visibly confuses him. This is because it was actually an improvised move by the actor playing Chewbacca, which caught Harrison Ford by surprise. You missed this in Inception. Ever wonder how you could figure out whether the ending scene is happening in the real world or not? Pay attention to the wedding ring Cobb is wearing. In the scenes that take place in the real world, he doesn't wear a wedding ring. And in dreams, he does. In the final scene, Cobb has no wedding ring, meaning it's the real world. You missed this in Gladiator. As Maximus continues winning in the Colosseum, after each fight he adds a new element to his breastplate. He adds horses, which likely represent the cavalry units he led in his past life, a tree for the farm he dreamed of returning home to, and a woman and child for the family he lost. You missed this in The Lord of the Rings Return of the King. The giant eagle that swoops in to save Frodo and Sam has a real-world origin you'll never be able to guess. It's actually based on a sign from an Oxford pub called The Eagle and Child, where author J.R.R. Tolkien wrote much of the books, and which has a sign that depicts a huge eagle carrying a child. You missed this in Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Listen as the T-1000, now disguised as a guard, knocks on the glass. Hear that? It sounds like metal hitting the glass, since he is actually made of liquid metal. Earlier in the film, we saw the real guard also knock on the glass, but his hand made a very normal sound. You missed this in The Matrix Reloaded. The freeway used in the iconic chase scene isn't a real stretch of road at all, but actually a very expensive set. The scene was shot on a 1.4 mile long three lane loop built especially for the movie, with a price tag of $2.5 million, and after filming was finished, they simply destroyed it. You missed this in Star Wars Episode V The Empire Strikes Back. Pay attention during the lightsaber battle between Darth Vader and Luke, and you'll see Vader use the same disarming technique twice. The first time, he knocks Luke's lightsaber from his hand, but the second time, Luke is able to hold on to his lightsaber, so Vader literally disarms him. 
You missed this in Whiplash, when Fletcher tells Andrew to count off at 215 beats per minute and then berates him for not counting at the right speed, it turns out that Andrew is actually keeping almost perfect time. Fletcher likely knows this and it's an early cue that he's actually playing with Andrew in an attempt to cultivate his musical talents.